Hey everyone, I'm Josh, and today on Ruby the Rubicon, we're going to have a look at Ruby's tag along the Honeypot solar system. Hey everyone, I'm Josh with Ruby's Tag Along for Honeypot. This video has been a long time coming. We've spent a lot of time and effort building up the solar system to put on the Honeypot, and we've done some things with the van that, as far as I'm aware, haven't been done before in an A van. We've absolutely pushed the limits on this van, um, and a lot of people have asked the question why. Um, now, the reason, the original design for the design goals for the system was to be able to run the microwave for up to half an hour in the evenings when traveling with the kids. So we do travel in the honey pot with our kids. We have an Alpine Annexes Tebs awning. The kids sleep on a stretcher in the front of the van and we do bulk cooking of meals. So having the ability to cook one night um, and put any leftovers in the fridge and then reheat them for lunch or dinner the next day is really, really important for us when we're traveling. Now, in reality, we hit that goal well before we even got the lithium batteries in the van. And at some point it turned into, okay, how far can I take this? I may have a problem. That being said, let's get into what we've done and let's have a look at what we've got on the van. So we're gonna start on the rear side of the van. Uh, and you can see straight up that we've got a solar panel somewhere. As far as I'm aware, nobody has ever put one. So what have we got on the van? Up the top, we have a 400 watt Lens Sun Solar flexible solar panel. It is attached with 3M VHB tape, and I'm here to tell you it's not going anywhere. There are a lot of people that um, rag on double-sided adhesive tapes. The 3M tape is exceptional. That panel is not going anywhere. When we put it on, we actually didn't quite get it on straight. I tried to reposition it and it was not happening. So we just had to put it, put it down where it was. Now below that 400 watt panel, there are two 50 watt Lens Sun solar panels wired in series for a total of 500 watts peak production. And I do want to stress that's peak production on the rear roof. Now, in order to make this panel, this top panel fit on the back roof when it's all folded up, I did have to add some 12 millimeter spacer blocks. You can see the red blocks up there. They're just a couple of pieces of cut up um, chopping board. Uh, there is also an additional 12 millimeter foam strip across the back there. And all of that just spaces the roof up enough to give enough clearance for the cable duct and the junction box on the, the left hand end of the panel there. The cabling comes down through some ducting on the side and goes in through this piece of conduit here. We drilled a hole through here. This is just sealed up with some silicon that goes into the void behind it and it goes into the cupboard that is just behind the tail lights here, which is where all our electrical equipment is. I'll get to that in a minute. If we come around the back here, you can see we've got, and only one's plugged in at the moment, we've got two auxiliary solar inputs. They are coupled to their individual solar controllers. They are solar inputs, not 12 volt inputs. So solar panel runs direct into that. As far as portable solar is concerned, right now, I have a 300 watt XTM solar panel that I have plugged into the van. Again, no regulator here. All the regulator gear is inside the van. We can also, with that second outlet, plug that into the 270 watt house panel that we have on top of Ruby for a total external input of 570 watts, which is pretty impressive. The controllers will actually do 300 watts a piece. So we could go up to 600 if we wanted to or plug two 400s in and they'd be over paneled. But right now that does the job nicely. Now on the front roof, and uh, I have gone through this one once before, we have an 80 watt Repco solar panel, simply because that was what fit in the available space. And then we have a 310 watt Sunman EARC uh, panel on the, on the front as well. Again, attached with 3M VHB tape. The cabling just runs through the ducting here. Again, similar to what I've done on the back, comes down into a piece of flex coro and in through a hole in here, all sealed up with silicon. The ends of this pipe are filled with silicon. They don't leak. There's no issues with water ingress. It is something I've been keeping a very close eye on. Um, we've done 
uh, nearly 4,000 Ks with these on. The panels haven't lifted, the no water's gotten in, nothing's cracked. Um, it has added weight to the roof. We've added about, uh, about 10 kilos to the back roof and about seven to the front. It does make putting it up a little bit of a challenge. We may look at upgrading to some gas assist struts later. That's about it for the outside for the solar system. Um, I'll take you inside and we will talk about what is internally in the van. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Click the bell so you don't miss out on any other uploads. Puppies! <laughs> so coming inside the van, all of our main solar equipment is down in this cupboard here. Now, this junction box here is where the solar panels on the rear roof come in. Um, it, the new standard requires isolation of the solar panels if you're over a certain capacity. We're not over that capacity, but I've put double pole isolation in anyway. This is both overcurrent and isolation in one, so that's there. Um, that comes in through the back of the junction box and then runs down into our cabling in here. Inside here is where we have um, the charges or the main charges. The charges for the auxiliary input is on the other side and I'll go show you those in a second. So on the left we have two uh, Victron, it's a full Victron system. So we have two Smart Solar MPPT 7510s, therefore the front 80 and the rear 2x50 um, panels. Then we've got 120 on the front panels. That controller is actually slightly over panelled. Um, we'll never actually see the full 310 watts because that controller can only do 290-ish watts, which is fine, I'm not worried about that. Um, the, the, the minor loss there, it's only on peak, we we'll rarely ever see that happen. On the back, we have a uh, Smart Solar 130 for the 400 watt panel, and we have an Orion XS121250, which is a 50 amp DC-DC for charging from the vehicle when we're on the road. The inverter we're using is a Victron MultiPlus 12 1670. That is a 70 amp charger when we're plugged into mains, not that we ever plug into mains, and it's a 1600 VA inverter. Now, a lot of people said that that would be too small to run the microwave. It's not. We can run the microwave for half an hour without any issues. We do get some, some temperature warnings come up, but as long as we know, like we, we stay within our limits. Now, it looks like this isn't vented, but it actually is. This is a fan-forced cooling inverter. It has a fan inside it, and it vents into the cupboard behind it, so it's always drawing fresh air from this cupboard. It's not circulating hot air around inside this cupboard, so this actually stays quite cool. For a main distribution, in here we have a Victron Lynx distributor, and I've just got an auxiliary Anderson out here. Um, there is a GPS tucked inside there, so we do get full remote tracking and full logging of everywhere we take the van. And every single one of these devices is connected to a central management unit, which I'll show you in a minute when I get um, to, to that. I'll take you over to the other side of the van and I'll quickly show you where the auxiliary solar inputs are, are housed, because obviously it's pretty tight in here. We've run out of room. I needed to make, I wanted to make this fit around the existing air conditioning piping. I didn't want to move that. In hindsight, I probably should have lowered this and it would have given me a little bit more space here. All right, we'll pop over the other side and we'll, we'll have a look at the auxiliary. Over on the opposite side of the bed, um, this is where we've put our batteries. So the question to answer what batteries we have, we have two 240 amp hour Valen and Lythen lithium LIFE PO4 batteries. They are safe. I'm not interested in arguing that topic. There are so many of them in use out there. They have proven themselves as a technology. I, I just, it's, it's not something I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna even enter into a debate with. Happy to talk facts, but don't tell me that lithium batteries catch fire. These are perfectly safe. So there's two of those in there. We have a Victron Smart Shunt for monitoring the uh, battery state of charge, isolator, and master fuse. Now, in order to build this box to be compliant with the latest standard, I did have to pull the existing box out, pull the mounting plate out, and relocate the pump. So this is not a small undertaking. If you want to do something like this, it, you do have to have a bit of engineering now. Um, I mounted all of the pump onto a plate, which is then mounted onto the side of the, the mounting points for the hot water service. It works just fine. On the other side, and I do have some wiring cleanup to do down here. It's just it's a little bit messy, but it's it's all it's all fine. This is where the two solar inputs come in, the auxiliary solar inputs come in, and they couple into a couple more Victron MPPT 120 units. 
Now, all of the Victron gear is linked back to a central management unit, which I'll show you in just a second. It's all linked in through USB connections. I have a 10 port powered USB hub that all of the devices plug into using Victron VE Direct to USB cables. Now the management unit that we're using does take VE Direct inputs directly on it. The reason I went for VE Direct for US to USB is simply for replacement parts. If I have a cable fail, um, then I don't wanna have to worry about do I need a VE Direct cable or do I need a VE Direct to USB cable? If they're all the same, they're all the same. And if I need to order spare parts, I know exactly what I need to order. For system management, we're using a Victron Ecrano GX. I hope I've got that pronounce, pronunciation correct. This is the latest and greatest in Victron technology. Originally, we had a color control GX, but as we've now got eight VE Direct devices, it exceeded the limits of the device. And while we could have gone with a servo, servo and an external touchscreen, we decided to go with this instead. It's an all-in-one unit. And I actually got this less for less than a servo and a touchscreen would have cost me. This is not the standard firmware that, it, that it's running at the moment. This is the beta firmware. And you can see, you know, with all the solar that we have on the roof, admittedly, we're having cloud edge effect and it's it's the numbers are jumping around a bit. But you can see we're cranking in the charge quite a fair bit. We drained 80 amp hours out of the batteries last night. It's 10 past 10 and we're already at 96%. We'll be fully charged by 11 o'clock. So the beta firmware has a new user interface and we think it's pretty slick. This is the tank levels. This is coming off our Safari ultrasonic sensors. Not 100% sure what I think of those sensors yet. Well, time will tell. Um, they seem to be working well enough. At the moment, we're monitoring both our water and our diesel level. So that's that. That's the overview of the solar system in the honeypot. Now, the biggest question becomes, why did we do this and, and what, were the, what were the things that we found out during the build? Um, well, the first thing we found out during the build is that, and I mean, no offense to Avan, the factory Avan wiring is really terrible. Um, if you're gonna do any kinds of upgrades, you need to be prepared to pretty much strip out or, or, mod, or, or redo a whole bunch of the wiring. The standard van comes with a, what I would call a single ring main that powers most of the accessories around the van. We have rewired everything and all of the individual accessories are now on individual outlets. We have extra USB outlets that we've fitted because the standard USB offering is pretty terrible. And uh, pro tip, if you're going to put extra USB outlets by the bed, don't put them vertically, put them horizontally because if you put them vertically, you'll need to not notch out the back corner of the drawer. Now, as far as power usage is concerned, this is our home away from home. All right, and this isn't just a, a thing that we need to work to make it work. We just want to get in it, go and have it work for us, not the other way around. The way we have set this up, we can use 240 volt power for more or less anything that we want. Once the batteries are fully charged, the inverter will run the air conditioning. And we, if we have enough solar yield throughout the day, we can use the air conditioning without having to worry about draining the batteries at all. Um, it will run the air conditioning for a few hours at night. We yet to have a hot enough night where we run it all, all where we run it all the way through the night to know how far down it depletes the battery. The maths on paper says that it probably won't quite last the night, but that depends on how much the air conditioner cycles on and off. So we'll wait and see. Right now, though, we have our Ryobi batteries charging on our six-port Ryobi charger. Um, overnight because we run a bug zapper and the kids run fans and torches and all sorts of stuff off the Ryobi accessories so that's plugged into 240 volts while the batteries are charging we can charge laptops we can run the microwave we can use the air conditioning we can we can charge phones we can charge devices we can charge cameras we can basically do whatever we want with the freedom to not have to worry about power that's why we did this now I do want to say that this is not necessarily for everyone um, this is just the way that we have chosen to do it. We wanted to push the limits and I wanted to see what was achievable. And certainly we've, we've achieved far more than I thought we ever would have been able to. And hopefully this helps inspire some of you guys to make the van work for you, not the other way around. Um, we see so many people touring with these vans. 
that are making compromises to make the van work for them well make the van work for you um, I will say one thing though if you're looking at ordering one of these from factory new I suggest that you request the GVM upgrade from factory and just pay the extra money we're going through the process of a GVM upgrade at the moment. Um, we're not over gross weight if we don't have water in the tank, but um, it certainly becomes an issue as to how much extra stuff we can carry. We have added about 100 kilos total weight between the batteries and the and all of the solar gear and the solar panels. So when you look at the factory allowances in these things, it doesn't leave a lot after that. Um, so that is something to be aware of. Well, that concludes our little walkthrough of the solar system in the honeypot. I do hope you enjoyed that video. If you do have any questions, please comment below. Let us know what you'd like to see more of, if there's something we didn't go into enough detail and you'd like to see more fine grain detail, let us know. Um, the most common question is, can I do this for you in your van? The answer is no. I am not a licensed electrician. I had an electrician do the 240 volt side of the system. And honestly, this is a really expensive undertaking to do. But that said, we've now got the freedom to take the van anywhere we want. And as long as we've got sunshine, and it doesn't need to be great sunshine, it's not a fantastic day today. But we used 70, 80 amp hours last night and we were fully charged by 10.30. So you can't argue with that. Please do like, subscribe. And right here, the audio dropped out. I'm still getting used to using the 360 camera. I'm just saying here, please like, subscribe, share the videos. It really does help us out. We're well on our way to 500 subscribers. And when we do hit 500 subscribers, we're going to uh, start doing a few special things for everybody who's been following along. This has been Josh. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Cheers. Well, at... Get out of the cupboard. Get out of the cupboard. Get out of the cupboard. Yeah. Alright, I need to film this now.